ranking member for holding this hearing today. Um, and to our witnesses, I really appreciate uh, your testimony. Um, I want to sort of start where, uh, where uh, Dr. Cassidy left off with uh, a focus on community health uh, centers. Um, Dr. Simon, I think you said in your testimony that that's kind of where you first uh, started encountering some of the um, uh, some of the huge challenges that uh, we're discussing here today. And it seems to me in Wisconsin that um, if, that the community health centers um, and their dental clinics are um, are are really stepping up and in uh, various communities really uh, uh, helping um, uh, create access that's affordable. Can you talk about your experience and the role that community health centers uh, play in improving access to care for underserved populations? Certainly, and I'm proud to do so alongside two other former community health center uh, clinicians. Um, I think one thing that community health centers can do is uh, a matter of scale, which is that if you are a dental department within a health center that provides not only medical care, but pharmacy, all sorts of services, all of that administrative burden that Dr. Isbell mentions does not fall exclusively on the backs of a few dentists. It's something that's distributed. Um, and I think that that makes it much more satisfying and meaningful to practice dentistry because those sorts of concerns aren't ones that you need to deal with alone. On top of that, a federally qualified health center is required to have at least 50% of its boards composed of community members, which means that you are in direct service to the community and listening to your neighbors and the people that you are hoping to serve and following their lead. And I will say that usually their lead includes dental care. Uh, when it comes to the things we're able to do in a community health center, it is very dependent currently on what state Medicaid programs will cover. Um, and while there is some amount of free care or sliding scale care, it's almost always insufficient. On top of that, there are not enough community health centers and not enough community health center dentists. So the people who are trying to get in often can't. Uh, when I was training in internal medicine residency, my primary care clinic was at an FQHC in Boston. The entire time I trained there, all three years, our dental clinic was never able to accept new patients. And none of my medical patients saw a dentist at our FQHC, even though the dental clinic was down the hall. Wow. Um, uh, Dr. Minter Jordan, uh, you noted in your testimony uh, that matern maternal care and oral health are linked. Um, <coughs> When a mother has uh, poor oral health or can't access the dental care she needs, she and her child may face worse health outcomes. Um, and I know our country is currently facing a maternity care crisis. Um, what policies uh, would you recommend to improve maternal oral health care? Thank you for the question, Senator Baldwin. Uh, just as you've said, uh, we know that studies show that periodontal treatment for pregnant women can result in a nearly fourfold reduction in the rate of preterm delivery. We also know that between 60 and 75% of pregnant people experience oral health care issues that raise the likelihood of major complications and poor birth outcomes. One of the things that we did at the Community Health Center that I led in Boston, we led a centering, centering pregnancy program that incorporated our dentists into the program to provide oral health care to pregnant mothers. Uh, so as from a policy perspective, it would be important for maternal health to be inclusive of oral health and to ensure that policies support mom getting access to oral health during her pregnancy and the education that goes along with that. Thank you. Um, in this conversation, it's important that we recognize that children must have access to dental care at a young age to ensure a healthy life. One way to improve access, which has uh, happened in my home state, is to provide school-based oral health prevention care. Dr. Simon, how does reaching people where they are um, with programs in schools or other community settings improve access and trust? As I mentioned to Senator Sanders, I think a lot about this in terms of making dentistry a separate door that's harder to get through. And what you're describing is eliminating that problem. Uh, not only in schools, but for adults in nursing homes or uh, homes for people with developmental disabilities and inclusive of the pediatrician's or primary care physician's office. I give these talks a lot to my fellow primary care physicians and they are always so excited because right now what they feel is helpless. They, like me, are seeing dental patients and not able to do anything for them. So I think being expansive not only of our workforce, but also the things we think about doing in various places are really important, just like what you described. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the panelists. I'm sorry that I wasn't 